Do PBN still work in 2020? Will they increase your website's rankings? And do private blog networks actually still work for SEO? Well, in this video, I'm gonna teach you exactly why I wouldn't touch a PBN with a 10 foot barge pole and why you shouldn't either. Plus, I'll reveal some of my top tips for avoiding these nasty black hat link building techniques. And I'm gonna show you some alternatives to PBNs so that you can still boost your website's rankings without doing anything black hat and risking it for a biscuit. So let's just jump straight in. By the way, really quickly, if you don't know what a PBN is, this is essentially a way of getting quick backlinks to your site. So you buy a bunch of expired domains, you link them to the website you want to rank, and then you drive more authority, boosting your website's rankings as a result, in theory. But it's all smoke and mirrors, as you're about to discover. So the biggest problem with PBNs is the fact that they're just a Google penalty waiting to happen, because with PBNs, you're essentially manipulating Google's algorithm, cheating the system, and artificially boosting your rankings. You're getting links to your content, not because it's genuinely valuable, but because you want to cheat the system. And this is a real problem, because it can really damage the quality of Google's rankings. And if they serve content that's not that valuable, that doesn't help the user, then the user's not gonna stick around and it could cost Google a lot of money in the long run. And that's exactly why PBNs are against Google's webmaster guidelines. So if you get caught, you could receive a manual action penalty and get put in the naughty corner, which means that your rankings, your traffic, and the overall value of your website could get destroyed overnight, which is savage because it could take months or even years to get your rankings back. So building a website is kind of like building a house. And if you build your home out of Play-Doh, it's just a matter of time before things get messy. Now, you might think if you use PBNs, Google will never catch you. In the same way that if someone robs a bank, they don't expect to get arrested the next day. But the truth is, it's so easy to tell a PBN. So usually they have no traffic, they have terrible content, and they have a very spammy backlink profile. And the truth is, if they link to you, they'll probably link to anyone, right? So that means casinos, Viagra websites, porn websites, and all the other drags of the internet. So it's very easy to tell if you're using a PBN, and that means it's just a matter of time before you get caught using them. But now some people, not you watching this of course, but some people might look at link building and they'll say, I don't know how to do it, it's too hard, I can't build links without PBNs. But the truth is, when we have so many link building alternatives, we have no excuses, okay? So there's a skyscraper technique, there's guest blogging, there's audio link building, there's Harrow, and these are all powerful ways to build links to your site without running the gauntlet and hoping your website won't tank overnight. And if you need more tips on this, your boy Julian Gold is gonna help you out. So subscribe to this channel and check out my other link building tutorials too because they're gonna help you a lot. Now you might be surprised by this, but actually PBNs aren't that cheap. In fact, they can get very expensive when you're building them out. So you've gotta pay for the expired domain, pay for hosting costs, hire a team to build out the website, pay for content on the site, and this can really add up. In fact, it can get quite expensive. So it blows my mind that someone will pay for this sort of risk. And the truth is that using PBNs is kind of like smoking in 2020. It's toxic, it's expensive, and to be honest, if someone does it in front of me, it pisses me off. One of the worst things about PBNs is the fact that it's all about short-term gratification because people use them are kind of finding the easy way to build links to the site rather than focusing on how to protect their website long term. And it's kind of like taking the path of least resistance. So this is such a bad mindset for your business because if you take the short term gratification and you don't worry about the future, then the long term consequences on your business could be really severe and you're not even thinking about them. So it's kind of like Corona right now, for example, right? I could run down to 7-Eleven, binge on loads of Oreos and sweets and crisps and everything like that and pummel my immune system or I could take the salad level on my health, feel better and fight off infections, and that will help me a lot more in the long run. So it's all about your mindset here. And the other thing is as well, that nothing worth doing comes easy. And that's especially true of link building. So with white hat link building, yeah, it requires a little bit of elbow grease, it's a bit of a pain in the ass sometimes, but it's 100% worth it. Plus, if you ever go to sell your website, the sales value of your website is gonna be destroyed if you've been using PBNs. So nobody wants to invest in a website that's built on PBNs in the same way that I don't wanna buy a fireplace that's made out of chocolate. So how can you avoid going to the dark side and using PBNs? Because I know that if you're new to this, it may seem really difficult to find out, right, what's a PBN and what website so I genuinely want to link from. And this is a big problem actually because you don't just go on a website and it has like a big sign that says PBN, don't get a link from us. You know, these websites are sometimes well hidden. So here's a few tips to avoid going to the dark side. And the first thing I'd say is look at the website's organic traffic because first of all, if it doesn't get any organic traffic, then Google doesn't like it. And also it's probably a PBN because if it has authority and it's not getting organic traffic, there's something wrong there. Also look at the look and feel of the website. So does it feel like a website a human would genuinely read or is it just there for link building purposes? And also look at the content. So is it well written? Does it have a decent word count? Does it include loads of grammar mistakes? And does it seem like really dodgy? Or does it look like a blog that's well written and had a lot of thought put into it? Also check out who are they linking to? Because if they're linking to loads of random websites or loads of spammy websites, 
then that's not a good sign and they've probably got a really poor backlink profile. And then finally, if you want to check out the history of a website, which I'd recommend doing because, you know, PBNs are essentially expired domains. So you can use a tool like Wayback Machine and this will help you decide, okay, is the website spammy? Do I want a link from it? Was it dodgy before? You know, and these are all the sort of factors you can use to check if the website is worth getting a link from. So now you know that PBNs aren't really worth the risk, you'd be crazy to use them and they don't really help you when it comes to SEO. So if you enjoyed this video, please smash a like on it because when you like it, YouTube's algorithm blesses me and that means my video will be shown in front of more people and I can help more people with my channel. But if you don't want to like it for me, do it for this cute puppy sitting in a teacup right here. Thanks for watching.